Edinburgh has so much nature. John is not scared of this spooky passageway. The structure that we are standing in front of right now is called the Merkit Cross. I've got a nice wee art gallery there. If, it's a, if it comes in a bit weather wise, if you get, to get yourself some lunch in it. We arrived in Edinburgh yesterday and we are staying at the Hub by Premier Inn, which is a modern hotel in a super convenient location. Today we are going to explore more of this city, spending time in some tranquil areas and later on learning about the dark and spooky history of Edinburgh. <laughs> Today we're going to spend the whole day exploring Edinburgh, but first we're going to get some breakfast. We're not going to have breakfast at the hotel, instead we're going to go to a little cafe that I found yesterday online. The reviews seem to be very, very good, so we want to try it. It also seems to be a pretty good price as well. So we just had breakfast at Poppy. It's really good, very, very nice place. I heard that one of the most popular drinks is the oat milk ice latte. We didn't get that, we just got regular lattes, but I recommend you try that if you do go because there was a table next to us and they were like, oh my gosh, this ice latte is so good. We are on our way to Dean Village now and we are crossing this very cool bridge. I bet during Halloween this looks like an amazing place and you can actually see quite a bit over it as well. I have just realized what this area reminds me of and it is the Sims Medieval. If any of you guys have played the Sims Medieval, you'll probably know what I mean. But that's what it looks like. This is a nice little surprise on the way to Dean Village. The weather seems a bit milder today as well which is um, surprising. Either that or my thermals are working and I think it might be my thermals. The closer and closer we get to the village, the quieter it gets. It's like stepping into another time period and now I can't hear any traffic. I can only hear the stream. Dean Village is an insanely picturesque area around the water of Leith within the city of Edinburgh. In the past, it was home to grain mills that at the time were driven by the currents of the water of Leith. It now serves as an attractive residential area. Due to its natural and architectural scenery, it has also become a destination for those wishing for tranquility and peace. There's like a little waterfall. I did not expect this. Ooh, right there. Oh, amazing. <laughs> there seems to be uh, some kind of works going on in somebody's garden. I just want to point out that it really, really smells like wild garlic. It must be growing somewhere here, but as you walk past, you can just smell this wild garlic. It properly like hit me. Get on your hands and knees and smell it. Get on my hands and knees and smell it. No, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's wild garlic. Obviously, I'm not going to pick it. I'm just going to leave it in the wilderness. Oh my goodness, that is spooky and wonderful. Bloodborne. Bloodborne. I was wondering what it reminds me of. So at the moment, we are heading down Miller Row and we're gonna make our way to Circus Lane, which is apparently another very picturesque area in Edinburgh. That bridge looks incredible. I actually didn't realize how big it was. Like it's big! In Bloodborne, there is a bridge like that that leads to a castle that looks like that. I mean like a... Like a cathedral type cathedral. place? Yeah. Yeah, with the werewolves at the start. This is the kind of place where you would find werewolves. It's all orchestrated. That sounds like something I would say. It does sound like something you would say. It's so huge! And there is so much nature around here. Aside from the smell of the wild garlic, the air here is so fresh. And I'm a big fan of like the fresh air. Where I live in England, we don't really get fresh air that often. So I take advantage of it as much as possible whenever we travel.
Edinburgh has so much nature and I haven't seen the side of it yet. It's amazing. Maybe just quickly down and then back up again. It's gonna be quick, John. It's gonna be so quick. If you go down the steps, there's actually a little trail right there and you can go on a little nature walk. It's very nice. Or you can take a photo right in the middle of this beautiful stream. We also saw a duck. That was a bonus. John has just mentioned something to me. This is an audio trail, which means that you can put headphones in, you can scan the QR codes, and you can find out more information about the sites that you're seeing. I think you could easily spend the whole day just exploring this area. It is getting particularly cloudy. such a beautiful street it's so quaint now we're going to get a late lunch we're heading to the Cambridge bar I've been there before in my last Edinburgh trip it's a very good place a very nice pub we got the cider this time and it is English but I'm really in the mood for some cider how is it tell me very tasty. Oh, I love it. Oh, it actually feels tart. Like biting into a lemon, but like not a sour. Just zesty. Look at the size of this burger. It is so big. John got the halloumi burger. So he got the vegetarian option, which is the halloumi burger. And I got the portobello burger, which is the other vegetarian option. Mm. So one of the gentlemen that works in this bar mentioned to us that he's from Inverness. And I was like, that's where we're going in a couple of days. We're going to spend a couple of days in Inverness. And he said, why don't I give you a list of places you can go to while you're in Inverness and that as a local he can recommend. So he did. And I am so, so grateful for this. It's definitely the furthest north I have ever been. So I appreciate any local input. So if it comes to a bit weather wise, if you get, to get yourself some lunch in a, a sitting there. I'm gutted that there are works being carried out here at the moment, but still, it looks so cool. This is the University of Edinburgh's School of Divinity. Its Victorian architecture is said to have inspired the castle of Hogwarts. I have just showed John the witch as well and somebody put flowers down. I said this before in a previous vlog, the witch as well is so underrated to me, like its significance is so unbelievably underrated and people just don't realize it's there because it's such a small little monument. Everybody just walks past it and goes straight to the castle, but that's an incredibly important part of Edinburgh's history. We just went up Lady Stairs Close to have a look at this area because a very cool building, a very important building is here and it is the Writers Museum. Unfortunately it is closed but I highly highly recommend you visit it if you get a chance when you come to Edinburgh because it's such a beautiful building and it's so important to Scottish literature. We are waiting for the tour to start. It's gonna start in about 20 minutes. So we found this boba shop, Char Time, very, very close to where the tour starts. So we're getting some hot boba tea. Nice. Uh -oh. What do you think? Now we are going on a vault tour. It looks incredible, very spooky, a little bit scary, but I'm really looking forward to it. Are you looking forward to the tour? Yeah. What are you looking forward to the most? Just learning about the history. History. Do you yeah. think 
Do you think we're gonna see ghosts? No. <laughs> John has just suggested doing this on Halloween and I cannot think of anything better. We saw a ghost bus go by. Imagine doing that on Halloween, how cool is that? In case you guys haven't picked up on it yet, we are big fans of Halloween and everything spooky and just like historic places that are oh, spooky. Right. Oh. On the way to the vault's entrance, our tour guide Megan took us around several landmarks. Now, the structure that we are standing in front of right now is called the Merkit Cross. And Merkit is an old Scots word for market. And a close is one of the names that we give to narrow alleyways in Scotland. It just started to snow, like properly snow. That street you also wander along is in fact the Cowgate, our old cattle market. Beneath the streets of Edinburgh's old town, there are extremely dark tunnels and chambers that are known as the Edinburgh Vaults. All right, everyone, take a good look around. This place has been in a sorry state of disrepair for many years. They are said to be one of the most haunted places in Scotland. Back in 95, when we began these tours, they were simply history tours, but that is until people like you who came on them decided that and said they had experiences of their own. The South Bridge vaults date back to the 1700s and were initially intended to be used by tradespeople. Eventually, many of these chambers ended up as unsanitary residences for those who were destitute. I do not want to go too much into the extensive history of the vaults as this is something that is absolutely worth going on a tour for. The vaults are closed to the public for safety reasons and the only way to explore them is to book onto a guided tour. So we just got done with the vaults tour. Oh my god. I feel like I need to decompress because it was so interesting, so informative, entertaining, but also genuinely very, very scary. Um, at least to me it was scary. I know some people didn't find it scary, but to me it was like, our tour guide was Megan and she was fantastic. Like I, I cannot stress this enough, how amazing she was. I'm going to leave the tour in my description box down below. Please check it out. It is so worth it if you want to know like the gritty history of Edinburgh. Megan was so informative. She was so entertaining. She did such a great job. China, I was like squeezing your hand. I was like, I'm terrified. It's just an amazing place. That's also really, really scary. So now we are heading to the Doric for dinner and if you've watched my last Edinburgh vlogs you will know that the Doric is Edinburgh's oldest gastro pub. The bistro has a separate entrance. I am definitely going to get the Doric IPA. Um, I had it last time when I was here and I absolutely loved it. So the Doric IPA has just arrived. Okay, cheers. It has that floral aftertaste, doesn't it? Almost like honey, right? Like honey and meadows and fields and flowers. So John and I are just having a peppermint tea before bed to help us sleep. So I just quickly ran outside to take a picture of the snow. But this is just so odd because it's April in like a couple of days and it's snowing. But it's so beautiful. Edinburgh looks so beautiful when it snows. I bet during Christmas time it looks magical. 